Woo! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mini version. The outside mini version of the Less D experience. Let me ask you guys a question. You know, a lot of things has happened, you know, historically, recently, currently, that we didn't think could possibly happen. So let me pose a question to you. Hmm. If the government shutdown becomes permanent for some odd reason or anything dramatic happens to us, meaning the United States, you know what I'm saying? Hey, oh, what's up? Could you survive? Could you survive? And I was thinking about this for a while, you know, even before the government shut down and things were happening. You know, it's a lot of things that I know people my age. Hey, Lewis, how you doing? People my age and older, like I'm, 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 I'm hitting 50 hard. <laughs> hey, Leo and Charles, how you guys doing? And so my question was like, okay, um, if push comes to shove, you had no lights. You had no, uh, you know, no natural gas in your house. You had no water. Um, you didn't have technology. If something dramatic happens to our, you know, the, our way of life, could you survive? Could we survive? Now, I know personally, now this should get fun. I want you guys to share some um, survival skills, some tactics, some even quirky or weird things that you've done in the past to survive, like doing a hurricane or a blackout or whatever else. Hey, Monty, how you doing? And Colin, um, could you survive? I'm going to start because if, if you could, could you, me, all right, first I got a confession. I, I don't know if I could, well... I think I can grow something. I could till a garden and grow my own vegetables and things like that and whatever, whatever you had. Oh, and if you didn't have a grocery store to go to, you couldn't go over to Walmart and Kmart and Food Line and whatever, whatever, whatever. Could you survive? What I wanted to do, I wanted to do something special um, that also was educational. And who knows, the stuff that we discuss on this show today out in this cold <laughs> you know, oh, and if you had no heat, anyway, um, something that might benefit us in the near future, because everybody and everything are going freaking crazy, people are going crazy, I'm sitting out here on my porch, y'all, just bear with the cold sister, hey, Suze, how you doing, so what I want you guys to do today is share some things that you know from your childhood that your grandma taught you or your granddad taught you or your, your great grand or your mama or whatever else now my thing is that i'm kind of proud of that i uh i'm face ashy and everything y'all it's just crazy and i'm looking at neighbors turn around because i'm in the cul-de-sac so everybody just come down here turn around one thing that i'm proud of is i can take a chicken a live chicken from the yard to the dinner table. Now let me let now. And I was taught this when we were like, uh, my grandma had uh, a friend called we called him Big John. You know, Big John. He was an old dude, and he took me out one day, and he was like, oh, "Come in here, girl. I'm gonna show you how to how to how to ring a chicken neck." I'm like, "Ring a chicken's neck? I don't want to ring a chicken's neck." But he literally. The chicken was running around in the yard. You know, we was in the country. <laughs> People was running in the yard. And first of all, you have to you have to chase the chicken. You have to grab the chicken. And it's got to be like kind of morbid for you northerners and you Yankees or whatever. But you had to chase the chicken, grab the chicken. And what it was two things he did. He's... Um, one technique was he put uh, like a, one of them thick twine looking yarn like strings around the chicken's neck and he was swinging around in the air until the neck popped off. Now that that was that was too much for me. But the other times he would have me catch the chicken and we had this like cut off tree stump where a tree used to be and, and there's a big giant axe is beside it. And so you take the axe, you cut the chicken's neck off, you cut the head off. 
Now he would he was kind of morbid. He would let the chicken run around with his head off just so I could scream and cry and act like a fool, you know, and things like that. But once the you know after you cut the chicken's head off, then you will pluck the chicken, <laughs> and then you will wash it or whatever else, and then you would you know cut the legs off and you know take it inside of the house, and then you would uh. Sometimes it, he would either cut the legs off and the arms off to have pieces of fried chicken or he would just gut it out and clean it and everything else to make uh, a baked whole chicken. So I can take a chicken. I can do that. I also what else I can do? I want you guys to start sharing what you guys know how to do as well. Um, I remember one time when there was a, a hurricane and everybody in the neighborhood was stinky. People's head was nappy and everything else. Not less. Uh, when I heard that the hurricane was coming, I got a whole bunch of alcohol bottles and I bathed the kids and myself in alcohol alcohol I mean it was kind of like you dilute it you don't put a lot on it when it's down in the private areas you know so we were clean and then I lit a candle I lit a candle and I will put the curling irons over the flame so for the five days we had no light and water and things like that our household was clean from the rooter to the tuna clean, booty clean, everything. And we had Shirley Temple curls. And people were like, how y'all hair is done? And how y'all smell like this and smell like that? So that's three survival tactics that I'm contributing. Um, and I also know how to shoot a gun. Yes, I know how to clean it. And I know how to load it and shoot it. Now I uh, it was uh, it was a revol one was a revolver and one was a, a, a nine millimeter. I don't know how to do a rifle though. I want to learn how to do a rifle. So that's some of the things I know my survival skills and things like that. And so I know this sounds kind of corny, but we need to like put all, everything we know if we can into this um into the comment section so if something does go down can we survive all jokes aside i mean can we can we feed our families can we bathe ourselves can we purify water do you guys know how to purify water without um a, a running stove or anything like that uh okay otis is saying what i know of is basically candles and kerosene lamps in the case of lights going out filling lots of jugs of water I'm not talking about um and he's also saying, saying up there um he is saying we as human beings are built to adapt and adjust and that's what we would have to do in the case of an immense emergency such as technology and computers going down governments shutting down and basic <laughs> fundamental needs and things like that yeah but i hey steven baby how you doing i'm not just talking about like a blackout or your lights out for a week because of a hurricane i'm talking about show enough ain't no currency happening y'all seen the movies in hollywoods where everything shut down some cataclysmic something go down do you guys know how to actually survive you know i you know so i want everybody to put everything that their granddaddy their nana their mama stuff you was taught at eight and five and things like that put it in the comments it would be interesting to see what we know you know could we survive you know what i'm saying some kind of attack or whatever and jugs of water oh did you talk about jugs of water but what if the water is not clean do you know how to purify that water Eh? Eh? Yeah. Do you guys know how to build a fire without a, a lighter? Can you strike a fire? I mean, come on. Susie is saying, I can cook on a kerosene heater, boil water to bathe with on, and the kerosene heater, okay, all right, to bathe with on the kerosene heater and can use it as a dryer for my hair. Yes, Suze. Yes. Um, oh, this is a purifying water. I need to know this. Yes, if you don't have a kerosene heater, like, um, um, hey, Chef Marie, how you doing, baby? If you don't have a kerosene heater, like Susie is talking about, you have to go outside. Now, I have a fireplace in my house, 
you know, but everybody don't have a fireplace in the house. Now, if I have, um, if it was me and I had access to my fireplace still, whenever something goes down, I would, you know, go out into the woods and get wood. Oh, and also everybody don't know what type of wood and branches burns the best. You see what I'm saying? Stuff that we take for granted. We need to go back. We need to go back in our minds and remember what the older people did with two, three generations before us did to survive. Because why everybody joking and talking about other stuff, we need to be learning how to survive and provide, you know, for our families, you know, because a lot of important stuff is being overshadowed while other disgusting stuff is happening. And we need to know, you know, what's going on. You know, if the rich decide to get richer and, you know, poo on us and cut stuff off, can we feed our babies? If you have infants, if you have infants, how do you feed your infants? They can't eat what you could probably survive off. So how do you um, feed a baby? These are the things that we must reach back to, guys, and, and find out or remember or do. Now, Susie's saying, go to the doctor. <laughs> Really, there's no Dollar Tree, Susie. The Dollar Tree is closed. She said, go to the Dollar Tree, get some solar lights, put them out in daytime, bring them in at night for lights. But Susie, hey, Marche, how you doing, baby? Um, but Susie, I'm talking about if you don't have an opportunity. That is great if we know something is coming or we have time to prepare or have the money to prepare. But if most of us don't have the time to prepare you know what you're gonna do do you know how to make candles yes you can make candles guys i mean we've seen it enough and on field trips to colonial williamsburg to know how to make candles you see them saying can you make a, a a fire outside in your yard if you don't have a fireplace like i have you know do you know how to spark a fire very good, Susie. Susie's saying carnation milk for babies. Yes, because back in my day, we put carnation milk and half water in those bottles. We didn't have Infamil, Similac, and Yak Yak, and whatever else they got on here going on or whatever else. So carnation good. Um, milk is good um, for babies as well. Um, come on, guys. Keep them coming. Because, uh, hey, Teela, how you doing? You know, I just... What else? What else? I mean, do you know how to, what would you feed? Because um, most of the time if something uh, go down, we look in our pantries. And something I know in every single pantry, you always see the dried beans never touched <laughs> or a lot of uh, like bad things and whatever else. Do you guys know how to um, till the ground to grow a garden? Do you know, um, cause I don't know that one. Um, I mean, I know how to till the ground, but I don't know what vegetable you cannot plant beside another vegetable. Cause one vegetable will choke the other vegetable out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why you see separate plots for certain vegetables and other vegetables. What fruits, um, would be, I know a lot of people think watermelon is very uh, racist and stereotypical and whatever else, but I remember an interview that Ryan Coogler, the director of Black Panther gave, I don't know if he was at the Breakfast Club or where he was, but he was saying, uh, was it him? <clears throat> it was somebody. I don't know why I'm outside and it's cold. I know I got to sing in a couple weeks. Um, <clears throat> but long story short, I knew it was him. Or was it him? Or was it the other guy? Anyway. I saw somebody say that when they were in Africa and they were going around in this big mountain to get to their other location, that they saw older people on the side of the road with cut up pieces of watermelon, giving them out to the, um, the workers and the travelers and things like that. And they say they stopped and said, why are you giving out watermelon? Do you know in our country, this is um, uh, a sign of racism and is the worst, is the thing that's looked down upon. And they were saying that watermelon uh, hydrates the human body like nothing else does. You know, when you're out in that heat and, and you're doing a back breaking work and things like that, the watermelon fruit hydrates every facet of your working system so you can maintain and won't get dehydrated or pass out. I didn't know that. 
You see what I'm saying? This is what I'm talking about. What type of things that we will get or what we can do to survive, feed our families, um, sustain ourselves, and things like that. Do you know how to build a house? You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about a 3,000 square foot house, thing like that, but could you build yourself a shelter? You know what I'm saying? Anything could happen, guys. Can we survive? We here in America, we're so spoiled and we're so entitled. Even the poorest of us is better off than millions of people across the world. Can we survive? You see what I'm saying? It's sad to say, but the homeless people will fare better than us in a cataclysmic situation because they know how to survive. You see what I'm saying? You know, how do you, what type of thing you would you get to moisten your lips and your skin? You know, do you know how to get sap out of a tree? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is so interesting to me. Um, what is Susie saying? My hands are freezing. Oh, I can't see you, Susan. It says, um, a single candle can be used to help heat that heat the room. Building a small terracotta clay pot radiator allows you to capture the heat generated from a candle. Heat that is normally easy. See, I want to be ready i want i don't want to depend on society or the government or whoever else to maintain my life or the life of my loved ones we need to know this guys we need to go back to this do you know what berries to eat and not to eat do you know what berries are poisonous do you know at what point in time do you not eat a blackberry i'm sorry it blacked out for a minute uh, the tech I got to go soon it's cold anyway so you know do you know um, again I forgot to go back to uh, the type of kindling or wood you would need to start a fire and then to sustain the fire do you know what berries to eat what not to eat uh, do you know uh, all kinds of stuff you know do you know now I can um, make a makeshift bow and arrow I know it sounds but I can um, can you make a bow and arrow? And if so, would you be able to shoot a squirrel or a muskrat? And then would you know how to kill it and clean it, um, sanitize it and fry it up? You know, and I'm, so, I'm gonna keep talking about frying. Do you know what else you can fry food in besides vegetable oil? Because we won't have access to the store for vegetable oil. Do you boil it? Do you broil boil sear it can you do all of that man so i just think this is very 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 interesting especially in lieu of the government shutting down and i don't know if it's true but i think they said those people who are getting food stamps may be affected if it goes on past six months don't quote me on that please uh i'm not here giving factual information about what the government is doing but i do see little blurbs of things happening and things like that so I want you guys to keep the conversation going. It's cold in a witch's titty out here, you know, and also clothes. Do you know how to wrap your feet up if you don't have access to socks anymore? Do you know how to keep yourself warm, you know, without the expensive uh, coats afforded to us and things like that? Do you know how to build uh, a crib, you know, for the little babies and things like that out of the wood? Do you know how to fasten wood? Do you know how to... Oh, uh, like, let's say we're making a crib. Could you put one together without the luxury of a hammer and a nail? Yes. And if you don't have string, do you know how? There are certain types of leaves and branches of certain type of trees that's just as strong as rope. Do we know that? I could go on and on and on, but I want you guys to really take this seriously and just let's share and give each other information and tips and build each other up with our knowledge and survival skills. You know, because we it's certain people out here that got whole compounds and camps where they're teaching their five and eight year olds how to take apart and put together um, rifles in under two minutes and things like that and whatever else. Most of us aren't ready for any type of anything to happen. 
you know. And so, I, you know, just think about that. You know, I know y'all rather be talking about the drama that's going on and, you know, this and that and whatever else, man. But it's enough bloggers and vloggers and article people and magazines and media outlets that's talking about the R. Kelly disaster. You know, I ain't going to say nothing about that because I just want him to fry. But anyway, uh, because I'm a victim of a lot of that stuff goes on. So don't even ask about that. Don't even put it in the comments. I don't want to even deal with that. It's enough people dealing with it, you know, but everybody wants to know about the real Atlanta housewife, who babies, who's and the, uh, stuff that has no bearing on us personally. We need to learn how to, you know, fill ourselves with the information that will edify us, help us level up in every type of way. And get us prepared for anything, you know. So um, I'm not going to be dealing with all that kind of stuff or whatever else. I want to always do something that will leave people educated or more aware, and, as do myself. I want to learn more and things like that and so on and so forth. So put all of your um, maybe childhood memories of the things that you used to do to survive. Your grandma, your great grandma, your big mom, your ma dear, your nana, however, or whoever you call them or whatever else. Put it in the comment section. You know, let's share. It's a whole bunch of stuff I didn't even cover because I'm cold and I got to go. But um, yeah, guys, let's do that. I mean, it's just interesting. I'm looking around in my neighborhood um, and things like that. It's just, you know, could we survive with all, out of all this? Hey, who knows? All right. This was just a mini, 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 mini snippet of the Lesty experience. You know, yes, it's on the off day and things like that. But I was busy yesterday, child. Yes. You know, you'll find out later. But I was real busy and things like that. And I'm excited about being busy that way. So I just want to say a uh, shout out to Michael Wright and his wife, Susan. Thank you guys. You guys are phenomenal and you're awesome. And um, just I just thank God for everybody who's poured into my life in a positive way. I'm so, so thankful, and I just want to just spread love and happiness whenever I can. So put those things in the comments. Uh, anything you could think of, anything that you're creating or building or some kind of survival skill or something that people may need, keep the conversation going. Hey, we all need therapy, and we all need to enhance ourselves in some kind of way. So put it all in the comments, and you guys have an awesome, awesome day, all right? See you later. Bye-bye.